It was a warm afternoon in June of 1972 when my sister and I left to study in France. We were young, we were scared, but we were relieved that we could leave Cambodia. The Vietnam War was spreading into Cambodia very rapidly. From 1975 to 1979, the Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia, and Cambodia became the killing fields of the Khmer Rouge. Close to two million lives were lost. My parents, my relatives, were among those who were starved to death or killed by those hardcore communists, the Khmer Rouge. It took me 18 years in exile to return home with my husband and our two young daughters to be part of the reconstruction of Cambodia. I became an activist. I joined politics. I got elected and then nominated as the first woman to run the women's ministry. Before that, it was run by a, by a man. And then I decided that we have to change this Cambodian proverb that says, men are gold and women are just a white piece of cloth. I said, no way. We have to change this proverb to, men are gold and women are precious gems. The gems of Cambodia. We campaigned throughout Cambodia to push for the adoption and the implementation of the law against domestic violence and against human trafficking. Women at the grassroots level were becoming candidates, joining politics. Yes. As a woman and a minister, I had to serve the prime minister, of course not from my party, because it was a coalition. Mr. Hun Sen, the Prime Minister of Cambodia, is one of the long last Asia's dictator. He has been in power for the past 34 years. Cambodia is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. The children the cronies, the relatives of Mr. Hun Sen own the top businesses. The court, the judiciary, is used to silence critics of Mr. Hun Sen and surely to put the opposition members in jail. In 2009, Mr. Hun Sen targeted me he didn't say nice things about me, insulted me in public. And I took him to court. He took me to court and I lost, of course. However, each day that I went to court, hundreds and thousands of women and men marched with me to court for justice. And they mobilized funds to pay for the fine, justice always prevails. In 2013, the opposition that I joined after leaving the government won the election, despite the fact that it was not free and fair, but we won the election in 2013, but we were denied victory. We protested peacefully. We demanded recount or re-elections. Thousands, close to a million people came to Freedom Park, marched peacefully with us throughout the city, the streets, saying, Pro, 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 change, change, change. They demanded the end of the culture of impunity. They demanded the end of corruption. The workers demanded fair wages and better working conditions. The women wanted free health care, digni dignity, 
Freedom Park was a hope for six months. We had free speech then, but then, in the early days of 2014, six months later, Mr. Hun Sen brought in his forces, special military armed forces. They were brutal. The workers were massacred. They closed down Freedom Park. And I said, no. We have to free Freedom Park. So I led a few number of youth to free Freedom Park peacefully again. And for three months, the crowds began to grow bigger, larger, but still demanding the same thing. Pro, 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 change, change, change. Again, three months later, on the 14th of June, 2014, the armed forces came again, and it was a day of terror. We, members of parliament, were detained, put in jail, including myself. We were jailed for seven days, but our colleagues, our youth leaders, are still in jail, charged for insurrection, sentenced to 20 years in jail. 2017, the people voted for change again at the local elections, and we won over 5,000 seats at the local level. Can you imagine? 5,000 seats. We represent half of Cambodia. We are not just an opposition. We are the hope of the people of Cambodia. Then Mr. Hun Sen realizes that he had to change a scenario. And his scenario is to destroy and to kill democracy in Cambodia. And today, democracy is dead in Cambodia. There is no freedom of speech. Mr. Hun Sen closed down 20 radio stations in one week. He went after civil society. He put human rights defenders in jail. He closed down the Cambodia Daily and an OA paper that has been in circulation for the past 20 years. The Cambodia Daily has to pay $6 million from tax. And then he came after us, the opposition. In September of 2017, Mr. Kam Sokha, the leader of the opposition, was arrested at home without an arrest warrant. In October, amendments were made in the political party law, so the Ministry of Interior can close any political party. Of course, they came after us. So in November, the Supreme Court a tool of Mr. Hun Sen closed down, dissolved the opposition. We lost our seats as parliamentarians, our 5,000 locally elected ele uh, officials also lost their positions. They live in fear in Cambodia today, but they are determined to keep on fighting for democracy. We, the top leader, leaders of the opposition, are banned from politics for five years, and we are in exile. We have just called on our people to not go to vote. Because on the 14th of May of this year, the opposition party was denied the right to register and to compete in the election in the next few months, in July of this year. How can you call it free and fair elections if the leader of the sole opposition is in jail, another leader is in self-exile, and the top leaders are in exile? And there is fear inside Cambodia. There's no civil society, no freedom of speech, no independent media. How can you call it free and fair elections? 
So we are saying to our people, and this is a campaign that is going live every day, gaining a momentum. Go, don't go to work on election day. Stay home, take a nap. <laughs> Stay home, take a nap. This is the call for boycott. So we are calling on the international community to be on the side of democracy and to call the next election a sham, especially the government of Japan must pull, pull itself out of this electoral process that is a sham. But some of these democratic governments still believe that they have to deal with China. But China is everywhere. China is not just in Cambodia. China is everywhere, correct? So be on the side of democracy rather than thinking about losing Cambodia to China. No. Be on the side of democracy. We ask you to join us in the campaign of Amnesty International to free Mr. Kamsokar, our leader. He is in jail without fair trial. And without your intervention, the international community, he will be in jail for the rest of his life. He is our leader. He is the hope of our people. We are not just an opposition. We represent half of the people of Cambodia. We are not just an opposition. For over 20 years, we have built democracy with our people. We are not just an opposition. We have fought for justice for, with and for our farmers who have lost their land. Now, only 30% of this land belong to our farmers. The rest are given to companies like in China, in Vietnam, in South Korea, and the cronies of Mr. Hun Sen. How can it be? You cannot think that you can reform a dictator, correct? But you can help democracy. We are not just the opposition. We know that in free and fair elections, the people will vote for pro, 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 change, change, change. We know that we can build a better Cambodia. This song that I sing, I sing on the trail of the campaign. And it's about the land, it's about the forest, it's about the river that we once had. Mean day, mean sly, mean chunka. Mean gay, dumb night, dang, be don't ta, mean tuck, mean day, mean pray, pregnant, sir. Die no baby, man, tormada, nang strong, poom, young, mean panya ha. Doi sa run ta, on day, on tree. Free, Mr. Kumsoka. Free the prisoners of conscience. Free Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.